All right, we're going to look at using some of the properties we've seen already, as well as a couple we're going to talk about right now to evaluate some uh, indefinite integrals. A couple things you, again, may know from working with definite integrals, and they certainly parallel what you learned with derivatives, are uh, in these little boxes here. If you have the integral of a constant times a function, the constant you can pull out of the, the integral just the way you did for derivatives. All right? So you can say that integral of some constant k times f of x is k times the integral of that, that function. If you have the integral of two functions added together, you can evaluate those two integrals, those, the integral of each function separately. You can say it's integral of f of x plus integral of g of x. So because of that here, if we have functions that have more than one term in them, we can just integrate it term by term. So we're going to do that right now with these few things down here. We'll look a little more closely. Um, if you're evaluating the integral of this one, this, this uh, x squared minus 2x plus 5, each term, right? Evaluate each of those integrals. This is going to be x cubed, but we've got to do one third. This is going to be x squared. This is going to be 5x, right? It's like an x to this is like 5x to the 0 right now. So you bump it up one. Integral of a constant, just that times x, plus some constant on the end there. Uh, I am going to uh, turn my attention to this one that says c first, because I think it looks a little easier than this, this crazy one down here. Um, if we want to do this, uh, if we want to get kind of uh, really uh, fancy about it, we can actually write integral of 3e e to the x dx plus integral of 3x dx plus integral of x cubed dx if we want to. We don't have to. We can just evaluate each one like we did over here. But if you want to be proper about it, you can write those things. The 3, I could actually, again, I could grab this 3 and uh, put that outside here. All right, we can make it 3 times integral of e to the x, which is just 3e to the x. And this one in the middle here, 3 to the x, that was 3 to the x divided by ln of 3. And this last one here is x to the fourth, one quarter, plus some constant there. All right, it's going to have that extra term, that constant on the end. If we're um, working with this one down here, there's actually four terms there. Now, it's it's best if you can try and write them as powers, because then we can uh, we can try and work with each one. This is like integral. I'm going to put the two in front. It's like two, two times integral of one over x plus. This is like integral of. I can put this x over 2, I can make it a half x, so I'm just going to say, I'll put the half in front there, plus 2 over this, I'm going to say put the 2 in front and make it integral of 1 over square root of x. And actually, because I happen to know that it looks very much like an integral that I know, I'm going to put a 2 and make this a 4. If I times a if I times the top by 2 and divide it by 2 over there, it's the same thing. Plus, this is 1 half integral of root x. Now, actually, the thing I should do with this, uh, because this doesn't end up being something familiar here, I should write that root x as x to the 1 half dx. Now, I left the dx off of each of these things. I can fit it in here, dx, dx on the first one. Uh, if I'm going to write each of those, First one, integral of 1 over x, that's that ln absolute value of x, that exception. Integral of x is 1 half. So i got to put this 1 half here first. And i got to put 1 half x squared. For the integral of x, 1 half x squared. So i got this 1 half is here. And the integral of this thing is this. All right, just to keep it straight, I have this 4 here. And then I got the integral of that is just root x. And then I have that half there. And the integral of this, I'm going to bump the power up to 3 halves. Okay, it's going to go up 1. 
And then I got to divide by three halves. Dividing by three halves is like multiplying by two thirds. That's the simplest way to do it there. And so if we write this all out here, plus a constant of course, uh, two ln absolute value of x plus one quarter x squared plus four root x plus, this is one third when you multiply those two fractions, x to the three halves, I can say it's square root of x to the third if I want, just to put it back into the form like what it was there. All right, so that one is seemed like uh, lots to get to the answer there. But that's what it is. All right, now let's shrink it down to get it out of the way. We can work with the other side here then. That is, uh, oops, get it out of the way there. There we go. Now there's another one up here involving trig functions. You have three things here. You have that, you have this, and you have this thing over here. Now, at this point, all we know is to reverse some derivative formulas. We don't have any other strategies here. This is going to give me the integral of cos is sine x. All right, the integral of this was going to be a 3 there. Keep the 3. But the integral of secant squared when you're thinking integral of that, you're thinking, what is it the derivative of? What's an antiderivative of that? Well, that is tangent. And then the same goes for this one. Uh, you think, what is that the derivative of? That is the derivative of cosecant, except we have to we have to make it minus because this says plus cosecant cotangent, and you know there's that negative involved. And then we got to go plus a constant here. All right. So that's uh, four different examples there of working with finding integrals of things, integrating one term at a time.